going on YouTube? Once again, it's Case Through the Goat for Vernon Speak Sports. We're mostly talking Auburn football and the rest of the SEC. Want to give a shout out to my fearless and true gang. And let's get the comment section active. Go ahead and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn on the plains of Auburn where the battle cry is War Eagle. Let's get it going. All right, so it's 2019, June nonetheless, and we're already talking about 2020 recruiting for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn is actually loading up on wide receivers. This is something that, I mean, kind of, sort of, could come as a surprise because Gus Malzahn likes to run somewhat of a run-heavy type offense where the wide receivers you know, can have an opportunity to maybe, you know, receive for about 800 yards, maybe a thousand yards at the most. I'm talking about at the most. I think the last 1,000 yard receiver for Auburn was back in 2009. And I want to say that was Darvin Adams, smooth, Darvin Smooth Adams. But so far in the 2020 class, Auburn has added three receivers to the class, okay? When you look at the level of talent, you talk about uh, 6'3", 190 pounds, you know, huge, huge get for the Tigers in Elijah Canyon. He's out of Florida. Matter of fact, went to the same high school as Sean Shivers appears to be a very good athlete when you look at him on film we will go into that a little bit more we're not going to talk about the talent per se but we're going to talk about the fact that Auburn is really going after somewhat elite receivers and some of us may be wondering why well here's my speculation I'm just going to use some of my football IQ and I'm going to try this on even for my own mental size is the fact that you want to kind of learn some lessons from this last recruiting class from 2019. Auburn was very, very big on George Pickens. George Pickens, I think, would have been a, one, an excellent contributor to this 2019 class. Would have been highly talented, well, is highly talented, and would have definitely added value to an already okay class for the Tigers, considering all the quote-unquote media-driven turmoil on the planes. But you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket, and I think that's something that Auburn did in this recruiting class, and it showed because when George Pickens decommitted, that's when you started seeing Auburn going after, say, the receiver from Arkansas. Can't think of his name right now. Kind of, sort of, doesn't matter started going after Velas Jones from USC, started going after some experienced guys that would have actually supplemented what Auburn probably thought talent-wise from George Pickens was going to immediately transfer over. Fast forward to the middle of the summer, still recruiting receivers from for 2019 landed Zach Farrar. Okay, so I think Auburn just wants to avoid, they want to get it right the first time. Kind of play the numbers game. You know some guys may or may not commit because that's the nature of the beast. But put yourself in a position to where you have some options within the recruiting class that you have so that you're not spending a lot of time, you know, kind of backtracking or retroactively uh, recruiting, okay? Also, too, with the whole receiver gig, I think about the quarterback situation for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn has a viable dual-threat quarterback in both Bo Nix and Joey Gatewood. If we look at the future for Auburn, we're talking more of a pro-style quarterback, in my opinion, from Bo Nix. You can sell prospective receivers on, hey, we have a quarterback that will get the ball to you. Yes, we do like to run the run-pass option, but we're going to throw the football as well because we have a, a quarterback that can throw it. We will have a quarterback down the stretch that can throw it. Joey Gatewood is actually not absolutely terrible, 
at throwing the football either. Maybe not as accurate or maybe not as, you know, has the quarterback IQ that Bo Nix has, but still, I want to say probably a little bit more skilled at the quarterback position than what Nick Marshall was back in 2013, 2014. We got to give Nick Marshall a lot of credit because his improvement as a passer between 2013 and 2014 was dramatic. Led the charge in torching Alabama in 2014. No need to go through the stats. The Alabama fans know exactly what we're talking about. War, damn eagle. Now, so here's the thing with all of this. Auburn is, is doing a great job of recovering recruiting wise I think Big Cat Weekend where all of these guys were in attendance including uh, st picking up Javion Cohen out of Phoenix City Phoenix City has become somewhat of a nice little hotbed for recruiting here in the state of Alabama we'll go into that on another video but Auburn definitely can't put all their eggs in one basket and just say, all right, we just know George Pickens is great. We just know George Pickens is going to commit to us. And then on signing day, a guy that you put all your marbles on flips to Georgia. Just can't have that happen in 2020. Just a brief video, guys. We're talking to Auburn recruiting here on a Sunday afternoon. Let's go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. And remember... This kid that we're talking about, six foot three, 190 pounds, ranks number 73 as a receiver in the country at the moment. That could change depending on his outcome this year. Has SEC offers, including Florida, Florida Arkansas, Georgia, Kentucky, and Ole Miss. Like I said before, Kobe Hudson and J.J. Evans have already committed we'll give more detail about all three of these guys moving forward once again it's case two to go for vernon speak sports auburn go ahead and like this video go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything i advise you to click the button so where the bell kind of sticks out so whenever vernon speaks comes on especially when i start doing these live streams you will be in the mix you won't have to hear about it later on until next time ladies and gentlemen i absolutely enjoy your company and i enjoy doing what i do with auburn sports and sec coverage war eagle